Yeah, see, back in the day there was roller derby and it was wild and crazy. Look at these wild and crazy people who play, oh my goodness, jumping over each other. Here's the story that I'm going to tell you. In 1935, there was this guy, Leo Seltzer, and he was a film publicist. He had owned some movie theaters and promoted another endurance spectacle. It was the walkathon. Oh yes, can you picture it now? Everybody out there, speed walking so hard, so much ferocity. Oh, such sport. <laughs> he needed something new, and he also wanted women, because he knew having women would sell tickets. Leo took advantage of people being super into roller skating and took an idea from these like six day bicycling races that were super popular at the time. And he combined it with roller skating. Ah, here's the roller derby. <laughs> the transcontinental roller derby was born. It was a month long endurance skating spectacle. It was like a cross country skating race, but it consisted of 25 two person teams skating around a wooden oval track for 57,000 laps. A lot of people don't like doing 27 laps in five minutes and 57,000 laps. Epic. <laughs> they skated 11 and a half hours per day, eventually skating a distance of 3,000 miles, which was like the distance from New York to California. If both members were on the track at the same time, they were disqualified. And if you had to complete so many laps a day or you would be eliminated, couldn't just take time off. And the teams were usually one man and one woman with men skating against men and with women skating against women. And they would trade off at regular intervals. Oh, she seems angry. Real mad. Fighting now. <laughs> this competition could last as long as 42 days. The contestants all ate and slept at the venue that they skated at. There were these cots, and they put them all in the middle of the track, and there were a bunch of nurses around monitoring them. Check your heart rate, check your blood pressure, make sure you're still doing all right in this crazy endurance race that you're taking on. The athletes got six meals a day, which is good, because you can only imagine how many calories they're burning skating that long in a race. One of the requirements was you couldn't leave the venue until the race was done. And only nine of those first 25 teams finished the first official a derby. Then after the success of the first one, they went on the road throughout the U.S. with a portable track. It was one of the cheapest forms of sporting entertainment. Leo often provided tickets at a discount. He knew that the audience he was attracting couldn't afford much. Uh, you could buy a 25-cent ticket voucher for only a dime at your local grocery store. What a deal! Roller Derby fans just never paid full price because Americans love discounts. You might have to pay 55 cents to a whole three dollars to see like the Cubs or the White Sox or Bears or Blackhawks in Chicago. And working class fans could just sit in this lovely air conditioned arena for 10 cents and relax. Watching these skaters just go round and round and round. Are we going to see a whip? Here it goes. Whip! <laughs> Leo Seltzer read an article where a New York journalist, Damon Runyon, pointed out that the most exciting moments were collisions between skaters. So this sport became a contact sport. And the players were encouraged to elbow each other, give pushes, or just dramatically fall to be entertaining. Oh, I was hoping one of them would dramatically fall while I said that. Anyone? Anyone? Anytime now. Nope, we're just going to skate great right now. That's fine. You'll fight soon. I've seen this photo. Oh, that was dramatic. Oh, no, I almost fell over. <laughs> Girls can't return when they can't be peaceful. Wow. Uh -huh. Look at that. Oh no, the women are fighting! Oh, this crazy women! Oh no! The length of the race went down and gradually the idea of having just two teams emerged. Two five-person teams skating together for 15-minute periods, earning points when members lapped others. 
so just a little bit closer to the sport we might recognize today. Then sadly, in 1937, there was a tragic event. On March 24th, while traveling from St. Louis to Cincinnati, a chartered bus carrying 23 skaters and associates blew out a tire and crashed into the support structure of a bridge in Salem, Illinois. There was an explosion and 40-foot flames erupted. 18 or 19 people burned to death on the bus. Newspaper wasn't sure when it was reported. The driver and another passenger flew through the windshield. Some made it to the hospital, but then succumbed to their injuries later. These were popular skaters at the time, like Joe Cleats and Libby Hoover, who died. Another source said that the death total might have been over 40 skaters and personnel. By 1941, the sport had grown and gained almost 4 million spectators. 4 million people loved roller derby. That's... I don't think 4 million people love roller derby now. We're in the 40s, but what's going on in the 40s? That's right, it's World War II, and athletes had to enlist because there were men and women who played roller derby, and they were going off the war, and that kind of hurt the sport. But by the end of the war, Seltzer was able to pick up where he left off. In 1948, roller derby made it onto TV. So you could watch roller derby from the comfort of your home. And there were crowds of 500 to 7,000 people who would watch in person. TV made roller derby players into stars. It was rough and aggressive. What are they doing? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> there were all these intense rivalries. Then in 1949, the National Roller Derby League was founded, and the first Roller Derby World Series was held, which I didn't know was a thing. In 1952, a Roller Derby Hall of Fame was established. This is the website of the Roller Derby Hall of Fame. It was clearly made sometime when the internet was built. They're actually so cute. Look at those skates. So these are our ancestors. These are the heroes, heroes of roller derby. By 1953, roller derby was getting overexposed on TV. So roller derby left the US and started a European tour, skating in Paris, Madrid, Barcelona, and London. Later in the 1950s, the roller derby base of operations was moved from Madison Square Garden to Los Angeles and new teams were established, the Los Angeles Braves and the California Bombers. Roller Derby was just altogether really confusing for fans. Was it real? Was it staged? Some fans really liked the theatricality. Others were kind of turned off by it. <laughs> so Seltzer handed off the league to his son, Jerry. He moved to Northern California, creating the San Francisco Bay Bombers. Stars of the time included Captain Annis Big Red Jensen and Golden Girl Joan Weston. Joan Weston, a roller derby hero. Wah! Oh my god. Look at that, just jumped backwards into them. <gasps> oh! Oh! Oh, stop it! Oh! Oh my gosh! Oh, elbow! Oh, elbow! No, Joan, no! <laughs> Joan, why? Ooh. Oh! I don't know if I can watch Joan anymore. This decade brought changes like helmets being mandatory. Thank goodness. The roller derby made it into magazines like Time and Life and Sports Illustrated. Everyone knew what this was. Jerry tried to bring changes to appeal to a bigger audience, but it didn't really work. Attendance stayed on the decline. Then, by the early 1970s, the economy was slowing down. There were rising fuel costs. You couldn't just keep moving this track from place to place and transporting all the players. Televised bouts with professional wrestling levels of theatrics couldn't even revive people's interest in it. 
They just couldn't afford these operating costs anymore, and the original Roller Derby League skated its last game on December 8th, 1973 in New York. Jerry sold everything to National Skating Derby. And in the late 70s to early 80s, derby stars started to refuse to skate the more theatrical style. An attempt was made in Los Angeles focused around beautiful women with very little skating talent. Soap opera drama. Just, just trying to really lay it on thick, thinking, oh, this is how we're going to bring back fans. Fans didn't come back. But then, Roller Games debuted on TV. Oh, yeah! Roller games! Roller games! Where's our cheerleaders? <laughs> this was roller games! What was that? We're gonna have a hair pulling match. And then... The alligator pit. Oh my gosh, there they are. There's the alligator pit. Who's this Fabio looking dude? <laughs> yeah, he's dressed like Tarzan. Whoa, those quads though. Okay, I have some appreciation for those quads. All right, muscly man, take the alligator. <laughs> the year was 1989 and Roller Games was here. This took place in the Super Roller Dome where all matches were broadcast and they use a figure eight track. One side is banked and it has amazing obstacles like the Wall of Death, which is the heavily banked side there that you can go up. And also the Jet Jump. The players who scored were called Jetters. Sounds familiar, right? They wore helmets and got points for how high they went up on the wall of death without going over. The jet jump has a 12 foot marker that allowed six points if the jetter gets past it and two if the jetter lands in front of it. And they had to land safely. Also, only four skaters were on the track at a time instead of five and you got a point for lapping each opponent. The cycles were 45 seconds long, no matter what the period clock said. There were four six minute periods cut down from the eight 12 minute periods that the original roller derby had been. All right, here we go. Let's see what how it looks. All right, we're doing our figure eight. Whip. Going up the wall of death. Oh my, and then over the jump. Nice. <laughs> Ooh. Took your opponent down. Oh no. Why would we have the alligator pit? It turns out for a tiebreaker, two skaters would have to skate around the pit of alligators. The first skater to skate around the pit five times or throw their opponent into the alligator pit was declared the winner. <laughs> the debut episode was the only time live alligators were used. Go up the wall of death! So depending how high you got up on the wall, you got points. And depending on your landing here, you got points. And then, of course, passing each other. Please stop losing your helmet. Safety. Safety. The players could get penalties. I can't imagine for what based on what I'm seeing. But interestingly, if they got penalties between periods or after the end of the game, they'd be fined. So these players must have been making money for this. this wow. Just wow. You guys want to go wrestle in the alligator pit? Oh, kick! Oh, over the railing! No! I wish the clarity was a little bit. Oh! Oh no! Mr. Mean! Holy moly! That's unsettling. 
I really hope that he's just tending to be hurt. My last bit of history was just that in 1999, Spike TV produced Roller Jam, which was a classic style roller derby on a wooden banked oval track. Inline skates could be used, but some still chose traditional quad skates, and it was a bit of a soap opera. Holy moly. And that's the history of roller derby up to before the year 2000, where it got modernized. Roller games. The video game. Super Nintendo. Skating, skating. Oh, down the hill. Jump, jump. <laughs> I want to play this game! Oh, now you have to fight someone! Punch! Kick! Knee! Yeah, sure, this is completely possible with wheels on. Kick them and knee them and... Yeah! And then you flex, and then you fight. But you have to flex first. That's how you power up your muscles. Oh! He just hulking up! What happened? He's turning red! Ooh! Are you gonna have to fight her? So apparently you wait until she gets tired. She gets tired because she's old. And then you kick her. Oh, skateboarders! That's not right. It should be all roller skates all the time. Oh, not motorcycles! Fire! Oh! We didn't know that there was going to be jets of fire. Helicopter? Oh, this is so extra! You're being bombed by a helicopter! A roller skater? I don't think you can make it through this! This is so unfair! What you- You don't even have a helmet! I don't know if you have enough health to get through this jam. Are you punching the helicopter? And then you flex! I'm fine! I have two bar- Two bars of health! I'm fine! <laughs> Who is this big boss? Are- Are these scarves? Or is that, like, floppy skin? What is this? Oh, this is the end of the game. This is the credits. I truly enjoyed watching this video game. This was a lot of fun. <laughs>